Good morning, everyone. We'll give folks a couple of minutes to join. Um, give about four or five minutes. All right, why don't we get started. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for spending your Sunday morning or your Sunday evening um, with uh, the Business Analysis Knowledge Share. And today's topic is Product Canvas. Why should BAs care about the Product Canvas? Um, before we get started, um, many times, um, you know, when we're writing requirements, um, we, we kind of need to understand the scope of the project effort. Um, Traditionally, there's been scope documents written, and you know we we go through the the iteration of getting scope information and documenting it as part of a canned artifact, which is kind of like a scope document. Um, the product canvas really is 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 advancement in times where we are using methodologies like the agile methodology, and the product canvas really is is an, a tool. Uh, in the toolbox of a business analyst. So today's presentation is mainly to kind of go through uh, what a product canvas is and um, how a business analyst can use a product canvas in their day-to-day -day work. That being said, before we get started in terms of introductions, I am the founder of the Business Analysis Knowledge Share Facebook group. Um, there's a blog that I run. Um, there's articles that are published once every week. And I do have a YouTube channel called BA Knowledge Share. Uh, coming up next in our series of events is um, a presentation on all about UMLs please feel free to sign in. I did include the link in the chat for those that are interested in signing in or signing up. Uh, feel free to check out the blog, the, uh, the Facebook group, as well as the YouTube channel. In today's agenda, uh, we're gonna go through uh, what is a product canvas, the product canvas structure, why should business analysts actually care about the product canvas, and how to go about building a product canvas. What is a product canvas? As I mentioned earlier, a product canvas captures ideas and requirements and typically scope information in general about a product. When I say product, it's the deliverable that I'm referring to here. Uh, one is it describes the big picture and the product details. So contextually, it provides information about what the product is supposed to do, what is the change all about, 
and essentially captures the level of detail that's needed in order to, for a developer to carry out their work. It covers inputs, functionality, design, demographics, and operational qualities. That being said, it is kind of a quick way to achieve um, scope in terms of requirements uh, for a business analyst. Um, it's designed to work with agile methodologies, uh, such as Scrum and Kanban. As, as mentioned earlier, um, traditionally in a waterfall project, we've, we've used things like scope documents um, to kind of capture the, the product, initial product scope. Uh, a product canvas is kind of a quick way, of, I consider it as a cheat sheet to get started with the scope. Uh, for those that just joined, um, I just got started. Um, I did have included links to the BA Knowledge Share in the chat, as well as for those that are interested in uh, getting additional information or additional or a certificate of attendance, uh, please IM me privately with your email address so I can send the um, certificate of attendance um, after this presentation. The product canvas also captures UX and supports user-centric design approach, um, as I will show you as we move forward um, or further along, um, how a designing or redesigning a website um, can, product canvas will include the, uh, the, the UX design as well uh, within, its, within that, the artifact. Um, it does cover the benefits and value of the product. So the key, two key words here are the benefit and value. So it really drives a point as to what that benefit of the, the product is and what the value is as well. Um, <clears throat> the next slide kind of gets into the product canvas structure. For those that are not familiar with uh, the product canvas and its structure. Really, this is kind of the minimal variables that are needed in a product canvas. Uh, one is the vision of the effort slash of what the product should be. Two is a project name. I mean, and over here, it's really what is the uh, what is the name of the effort. Um, personas, big picture, and product details. So personas is basically who is your user of this, this specific product. Um, in terms of the big picture, well, what should the product look like, right? So in terms of if you're designing a website, well, how should the screens look like? Or what should the screens look like? It could also include things like what is the process um, and what does it look like? Um, you can include or actually conduct some sort of functional decomposition of the process and include that in the big picture. Um, the last section or the, the variable is the product details. Um, a lot of folks uh, use that section to really break down the sprints. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, product canvas is more so a tool for uh, within agile, within that framework. It is traditionally or typically used within the Scrum uh, Kanban uh, framework as well. Um, and also just to kind of re reiterate, when we say agile, it's, it's typically it's minimal documentation. That's kind of one of the agile principles. Uh, but at the same time, this, this drives towards that minimal documentation and it drives towards the collaboration between um, stakeholders. Why should business analysts care about the product canvas? Um, so business analysts, as I see it, or business analysis as I see it, is more of a skill set in today's world. It's, it's not so much a role. Um, traditionally, in the waterfall approach, business analysts had a role specific to, uh, within a project. However, as we move along into this new realm of machine learning, data sciences, um, and all that, that whole new world, um, the role of a business analyst, per se, doesn't really or may not exist. Um, so the role is more so has been shifted over to being product owners, this roles that are moving over to delivery leads. So I'm using the word business analysis more so as a skill set. Um, product canvases or using a product canvas is more so a tool rather than a rather than 
you know, an additional hey, documentation that needs to be checked, checked off as part of a checkbox. So it is, it is a valuable tool to use. Um, so that kind of covers the first point. There's the evolving role in Agile, right? So BAs are moving over to being POs, delivery leads, and in some cases, testers are playing the role of BAs as well. So this tool is, is valuable in the sense that it's, it's a good to know tool in order to understand scope. Um, that gets into the next subject, understand scope. Um, initially, when you're gathering requirements, and even before you start gathering requirements, it kind of becomes important to understand, um, you know, what is the scope of a project? What is the scope of the effort that you're going to gather requirements for? This really helps you get to the point that understands, it helps you understand the scope. It establishes value. So when you're dealing with your stakeholders, your business partners, um, this really breaks down the variables for them. And it's, it, 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 it helps you, enables you uh, to understand what the scope is, what should that minimum viable product be. So this is, a, this is definitely a valuable tool from that perspective. As I mentioned earlier, it could replace a traditional scope document. Number five, a quick turnaround. So from a delivery cycle and requirements management life cycle, it really helps to quickly turn around your, your scope. It helps you to quickly understand what your scope is and potentially secure your initial business slash stakeholder requirements. It, it, I got into collaboration. It, it helps in collaborating with your SMEs, with your business stakeholders up front, as well as with your developers and QA folks as well, and make sure that everyone's on the same page as to what, why are we actually doing this, uh, or delivering this product or uh, undertaking this effort. <clears throat> For those that just joined, um, I <clears throat> I'm walking through the slides in terms of product canvas, um, but I would highly recommend looking at the chat um, box. I have included um, a couple of items around the links to the BA Knowledge Share website. Um, I've also included uh, a message there saying if you if you would like to receive a, um, a certificate at the end of this presentation, the certificate of attendance, um, I would recommend that you send me your email in, in the private uh, chat box. Moving on, um, as I mentioned earlier, the, I laid out the initial vision, the project name, persona, the big picture, and the product details. Um, <clears throat> that being said, um, I just wanna walk you through a use case. As an example, how would we use a product canvas? So how would we use a product canvas, right? So in this example, um, I, as a business owner, and this is the vision, I would like to rebuild the blog and training website so that it is more user friendly. So that's the vision of this product. The project name is rebuild baknowledgeshare.wordpress.com. Now moving on, if you look at the columns of the variables here, which I think are the critical variables at the bottom part of this canvas, one is a persona, you're identifying who your users are or who would actually use this product when you do rebuild the website. This, the middle column is a big picture. So it kind of gets into the, um, the idea of what does the process look like for each persona? So I'm, I will get into the details later on, but really it breaks down the process. Um, the big picture will also include details. So potentially it could include your stakeholder requirements, um, or your acceptance criteria, um, and if, if those that are familiar with Agile. So as a user, I need to see X, Y, and Z so that I can X, Y, and Z. So that's kind of your acceptance criteria. And then you, you, you would include your UI screens in this, in this case. So UI screens could be designed very simply using tools like Balsamic or um, simple Word uh, document as well. So creating those UI screens and laying it out here um, is, is helpful. Um, you would also include your non-functional requirements. So in this case, as an example, is my response time should be less than one second response time in, in terms of communicating the uh, information out to your client. The product details, I do notice a typo here. Uh, it's actually sprint one and sprint two. Um, so you would break down your, your detail stories um, in this section uh, by sprint. Now, it doesn't have to be look perfect or look 
clean, right? But it needs to be a workable document or working document that you can share with your, with your customer. Who are the stakeholders for the product canvas? So really, um, I'm ranking it by um, more so by priority, if you will. So you would include or collaborate your, with your SMEs, your domain SMEs, um, could be your end users, could be your customers, um, your sponsor, um, the one that is actually gonna be sponsoring the effort, um, the project manager, and customers can be used um, you know, along with SMEs, but sometimes depending upon the effort, your customers could really be separate from the domain um, SME. Your business analyst as in yourself, right? So you would be a stakeholder in this as well, but you would be responsible for creating this, um, given, granted also that you may not play the role of business analyst in Agile, you may play the role of a product owner or a delivery lead. Um, so depending upon who's doing that skill set, like the business analysis work, they would actually initiate or be responsible for the product canvas. The product owners I've mentioned earlier interchangeably in Agile. Um, the QA folks, it's critical to include your QA, meaning your test team. Um, they are the ones that will test the product. Uh, many times I've received feedback from the testers saying, hey, we don't know what this project is about. We don't understand what the current state is. So this really helps the QA folks understand why we're, we're, we're delivering this product. And your development team, same boat as the QA folks, right? So they want to understand, well, the why. Um, some of them actually do want to understand the why. Some people just want to keep coding. So it depends upon how, how your development team is and what their interests are. So those are the, the key stakeholders in terms of creating the product canvas. Let's look at the life cycle of product canvas. So really, if, if you were to look at the life cycle within your uh, delivering of a product, you, in, you vision and create the initial canvas. So that's your, your, your starting point. And as you move along, you, you kind of incrementally um, build your product canvas. Like say for instance, if you have a baseline in this first area here, where it says vision and create initial canvas, then you, as you move along, you would kind of identify your MVP and you would kind of work incrementally in updating your product canvas. As you move along through your product development cycle, you kind of obtain your feedback from your customer. Because remember, Agile is all about change and absorbing change and, and making sure that you're delivering the product that adds value or provides value to your um, customer. So from that perspective, the, the feedback loop within Agile really helps you, um, would help you kind of update in updating the product canvas. And you would actually do it with the product owner and with the, your team involved, as well as with your, um, with your customer or your SME. So this is kind of, so think, of it, think about it as you set the product canvas and then you kind of rinse and repeat throughout until you hit the end of the product deliverable, that's when you, you, would, you would stop. Um, keep in mind, I, I, I keep hearing, you know, Agile is, you can keep changing requirements in Agile, but keep in mind, change can only go so far. Uh, you want a certain baseline of the product canvas and of your requirements. Uh, at the very beginning, but you can keep changing as long as you have your basic scope slash product canvas in place at the very beginning. I would say 80% should be, should be stabilized at, up front. Four simple um, steps to approaching to creating a product canvas. I kind of created a mnemonic, uh, which is EDID, right? So the first is you establish your vision, your goals, which is your E. The second is you determine your personas, which is a D, you identify the big picture, I, and you describe the product de details, which is a D. So it really, it's EDID. Keep that mnemonic in your head um, if you do create a product canvas, just so it's a simple step-by-step -step and a more um, organized way to approach product canvases. Number one, step one, establish the vision and goals, right? So within, um, you, you, you set up your product canvas workshop and within that you kind of establish your vision and goals. Many times when the business creates their objectives at a strategic level, it kind of becomes important for you to take that next step and use the product canvas 
to translate what the business object, what the strategic or business objective is to what it means um, in terms of requirements. So this really helps bridge the gap between the strategic vision of the business to the what does it actually mean to deliver or what does it actually mean uh, in terms of the product that your delivery team is going to create. Number two is you want to determine your personas, right? So how do we determine our personas? Well, there's plenty of tools out there. One is actually, one important tool is your user journey map. Um, in this example, and let me kind of remind you as to what that example is. One is you, uh, or we are rebuilding um, a training website um, so that um, users have easy access to, to uh, training tools as well as to videos, right? That's kind of the vision that we established up front. Now, who are our personas? Um, I would recommend if, if you can do this, right? So do some sort of market research. Do some reach, reach out to customers that are actually using your website um, and, and, and ask them, well, how are you using a website today? Um, how, what, what are some features you would like to see, right? So many times custom, doing the market research, asking the future state cust, uh, question to your customer may not be as effective, but it does give you some guideline as to what direction you should take, who your persona is, and kind of understand the demographic. Uh, some, so, so one tool to use is a user journey map where you really break down um, your demographic. Uh, what do, does your uh, persona use this tool for, or this product for? Um, and basically it gets into um, the different categories of personas you can include in your product canvas. Tips on personas, personas should be relevant believable, specific. Um, so really, when we say relevant, it should, they should, it, it can be anyone, the whole world, or the whole universe of the world. It needs to be very relevant to what your product is um, supposed to do, believable, same category, right? So someone, it can be an alien that lives in Mars that wants to use the website, right? It needs to be something or someone that's believable, specific, right? So um, many times we get into this, this, um, analysis paralysis of we want to reach out to a bunch of demographics. We want to reach out to school kids. We want to reach out to university grads. We want to reach out to, um, you know, so on and so forth, but really narrow it down to specific personas. Um, and this kind of ties to your, or will feed into your minimum value, uh, viable product or your MVP. Um, Smita, so in our case, it was John is a 34 year old BA looking for information and analysis. Smita is a 40-year-old mom who is looking to change careers and is looking um, for training videos on business analysis. So these are our two personas. The next item here is um, identify a big picture. So in this, you're going to kind of lay out your process um, flow. Um, you could use tools like um, processing, business process modeling, uh, but really at the highest level. You don't want to get into that level of detail here. Uh, when we say details, it could include acceptance criteria. What's acceptable for your customer? And then also UI screens as well as non-functional requirements. Um, tips on identifying the big picture, start with the epic. Start with the big picture, meaning at the highest level, this is what needs to be done. Create storyboards. Um, storyboards, simply it's chunking out the work, the process, and, and how would you actually uh, chunk out the work by process? So tools to use are things like story mapping. Create designs, um, UI screens, there's tools out there like Balsamic you could use. Uh, create sc UI screens such that it's, it's really not believable. You wanna create it such that it's minimal. Um, you're not going out and designing the screen and doing the you know the, the the color schema and all that stuff you're really designing it to the point where you're you're at you're looking for agreement from your customer to say hey this works this box will work on the left hand side versus not so really at the structural level and also your non-functional so what should the response time be in this case um describe product details so in this case um once again typo um sprint one um you would lay out your stories uh, by sprint and lay out your milestones um, over here as well. 
Um, tips on product details, identify sprinkles, determine stories, add acceptance criteria. So really it's, it's to that level you wanna create your product details. Uh, acceptance criteria can be included in the big picture as well. It depends upon how you wanna dice and spite it. There's no set rule to achieve um, what you need to achieve at, at the end. Tools create for creating a product canvas. Um, there's plenty of tools out there. You could use tools like Excel, so create a simple Excel spreadsheet. Word, um, the big thing right now is Miro, which is like an online collaborative tool. Um, they do have the ability to create product canvases and have the ability to, for people to contribute or SMEs to contribute and enter their information uh, live. Lucidchart is another one. You could use simple tools like Visio as well. So pretty simple um, tools out there, but really the, at the end of it, it's, it's making sure that you drive the, the value and the benefit to your, uh, to your end customer and to your team as well. And however you do it, it, it's, it all depends upon um, how you facilitate the workshop sessions as well. Uh, that being said, this was a short presentation. Um, I am open to any questions that you may have. Um, so feel free to include them in the chat or feel free to unmute yourselves and ask any questions. Okay. Um, so as mentioned, the very, very beginning of the session, um, our next free event is all about UMLs. Uh, which is Unified Modified Language. Um, really, my thought process is where we will be covering uh, a live case and as to how to conduct UMLs. It is, it'll be on um, Sunday, January 10th at 10 a.m. I see that there's a question. Oh, we are okay here. Um, that being said, if you do have questions outside of the session, feel free to email me. Um, it is at, uh, it's included in the chat as well. Um, and, uh, you know, feel free to join us in our next session, which is January 10th. I appreciate your time and I kept the short and sweet because we all know it's a Sunday and we all want to go out and have some fun. So thank you for your time.